the last time we spoke about loss aversion, there was one other point that we missed out, which was availability heuristic. You said it is kind of loosely, broadly connected to loss aversion. So why don't we take a look at that concept and dive into that? Take it away. So availability heuristic, uh, also called the spotlight effect by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, Daniel Kahneman is a Nobel Prize winner for behavioral economics. The first uh, economist, actually not an economist, the only psychologist in the world probably to win a Nobel Prize for economics, who's not an economist. <clears throat> and he's uh, talked about it. He's mentioned it in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, and he's called it the spotlight effect. What you have in your mind right now is the most important thing in the world for you while it's in your mind, which is very logical. At the same time, it sounds like a very, very grand statement. And that's related to the availability heuristic. And plenty of people don't understand how advertising works. They think that the major objective of most ads is to convince you to buy their products. Uh, and that's totally, totally wrong. Some of them are. Um, uh, Philip Kotler, uh, one of the pioneers of marketing said, an ad has three purposes. Uh, remind, inform, and persuade. Okay, so I think most of them are there, say 99% of them are there to remind rather than inform or persuade. It's very difficult to persuade you through a 10 second ad. It's very difficult to give you information about how iPhone works through a 10 second ad. Initial ads can be used for making a noise, but after that, most of the ads are just a smart way to just keep the product in your brain. It's on top of your mind. So if you go to a shop and you want to buy a cold drink, if Coke has been doing a lot of ads, for some reason I don't see a lot of Coke ads today, but for most of the periods, Coke has advertised more than any other brand. So people would have Coke on top of their minds. So they would just say, I want a Coke. They would not say, I want a soft drink because Coke is on top of the mix. They wouldn't want to even take a chance with something else because that would mean that they would have to think if not Coke, then what? Which other brand? It's, it's just too much of work for them. So the minute they think of soft drink, Coke just pops their mind and they say, okay, I want to Coke. So Coke's holdings and the point of purchase, even when you go to shop, the, they, they will be a, a visible cooler. Plenty of these shop guys have been given a visible cooler by Coke itself, which has a Coke logo on the cooler. <laughs> so you might keep other drinks, but you see Coke on the logo. So if, if you haven't seen those ads, at least when you go there, you basically see Coke and you want to buy a Coke. <laughs> so <clears throat> that is the availability heuristic. Because since you're thinking about that at that time, and you're not thinking of anything else, that has to be the most important thing in your life. And hence, you're buying. So it is in a way related to loss aversion because you already got this in your mind. You don't want to do any more research about it because it's already there. You, you have other things to do than keep on looking for more information and uh, focus on decision making. So you just say, okay, that's it, man. I'm done. I'm through. <laughs> this is it. That's why branding and constant repetition I, 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 I keep on getting this funny question. Uh, is this, uh, I, I'm, I'm using this strategy, but isn't it an overkill? Am I not putting out too much out there? And I'm constantly shocked because some people think I'm egoistical. And I think this is the most egoistical question in the world. You think that people have nothing else to do, but keep on looking at each and every one of your messages? Plenty of people who are on your network probably have not even seen a single message of yours. Forget working. 
So there is no such thing as okay because plenty of people have other things to do than just observe what you are doing 24 hours a day. So they might you might put out 10 messages, you might put out you might have 100 holdings. Everybody is not going to see 100 holdings. Everybody is not going to see 10 messages that you put on social media. I may see nothing. I may see one message of yours in uh, 10 days. The the way Facebook algorithms work, LinkedIn algorithms works, everything keeps changing. It's very very complicated, and plenty of people who used to see your posts no longer see your posts. It, it's just crazy. So there is in today's world there is nothing called overkill. If you believe in this strategy and it's proved to be one of the most powerful strategies in the world, you have to be out there. If you're not not out there. Somebody else is out there, and that somebody else has one percent of your capability. People are going to go to him rather than to you. And another huge line I hear from people, which is the most egoistic line ever, is, "I just focus on my work. I don't do marketing. I don't go to parties. I don't do networking." That's the most egoistic and stupid statement I've ever heard because you think. That people will know about your work. How will they know about your work? They will. They have nothing else to do but to follow you, to discuss your work, to analyze your work. No, you have to put your work in front of them. So there was a some guy, some acquaintance, who said that uh, I, I hate marketing. I hate all this nonsense, and I want to. Create an event, and I don't want to call Shah Rukh Khan for that event because then people will come for Shah Rukh Khan. They will not come for me, and I want people to come for me. And people call me egoistical. <laughs> What a joke! <laughs> and I told him that the first time they might come for Shah Rukh Khan. and then because of that they're going to see your work and then the second time even if you don't have sharukh khan some of them will come just for you because you had sharukh khan come for the first exhibition and now they know your work and now they know how good you are so if you're going to have this attitude then you're going to go out of business and he did go out of business <clears throat> so uh, it, okay. it's So I get that. Now my question over here is that you can't, uh, you can't just do what is comfortable to you. Okay. You, you, there is a strategy that works. If you're not comfortable and you don't use it, and somebody else uses it, you're out. Correct. So in in this case, let's say um, I'm doing uh, two or three different types of uh, market, uh, di digital marketing solutions. Uh, in your case, I know of two workshops that you're doing. One is the uh, invisible selling workshop, and one is the mind map workshop. So there are two different things. It's not just selling mind maps like Coke. You know, it's not just Coke. It's mind maps and invisible selling. In my case, I'm doing websites, email marketing. So, what's how does that work in terms of even if I wanted to, should I like one month do website? Uh, another month do email marketing, and then again third month back to website, and then do email marketing. What? What if there are two things to do? I mean, what does Coke do for its other products? Does it does it care if the other products are doing well or not? And just screw it, just Coke, just make it Coke. That's it. No, if you're if you're focusing on offering something that's unique and useful, then you can sell a hundred products, right? Because each product is unique and useful in the mind of the buyer. So, I think Fanta also is a Coke brand. And if I want an orange drink, and Fanta is on top of my mind, I will perceive it to be the best orange drink. So I'm going to buy Fanta. I, I don't. I may know that it's a part of Coke, or I may not know. But what's the option? Does any other orange drink come to my mind? Is the availability heuristic working there? No. So I just go ahead with this. So I I don't think there's any other website trainer who's branded like you. There are plenty of commodities, uh, so-called digital marketing consultants. And then there like I I think there's one uh, for every every time you see a security guard, there must be some digital marketing consultant nearby. <laughs> they're they're that common. So 
they, they're just commodities because they've not branded themselves. So it doesn't matter. So if you're a digital marketing consultant, but you've branded yourself separately, then for the, for the prospect, you're unique and he's going to think about you first because the other guys, they just have no clue about how to market themselves. I get an email every day saying, uh, dear, dear sir slash madam, comma, we offer website hosting, domain, and there's a bouquet of 10 services. And sometimes there's no name of the person also. It's just the company's name. And the company's name is also something very unimaginative, like online business solutions or some generic name. Your, your business name must never be generic. Never, never be generic. Because if it's generic, then people don't know whether that's your brand name or that's your service. So if, if you're selling uh, mobile phones, then you should never call your business mobile phone shopping. Should never do that. It should be something distinct. Because I don't know whether you're saying you've got a mobile shop, shopping, shop, or that's the name of your business. So it's got to be something distinct. In your case, it should be your name that's out there all the time so that people know, okay, this is the distinctive identity that you have. It's not some generic website consultant or uh, online consultant. So coming back to the fact that we will be doing like email marketing is one of my core services, which people use. And so is the website making. Of course, I have the free website tutorial website for you to go and make your own website. And if you want help, then we can help you to make a website and things like that. But websites, email marketing, these are two different services that my focus is on. And, uh, and so is it that I have to send reminder messages for both those services. And tomorrow, if I had a third service, then I should send reminder messages for all three with some sort of uh, equal gap, right? Is that what you're saying? That basically the availability heuristic is about keeping it in front of them all the time. So it's the same message going to the same people, but it's only three different messages, but coming again and again and again in a kind of a loop. Is that right? Yeah, as, as long as each one is perceived to be unique and useful, yes. Supposing in one of the cases where the person is like, maybe he was interested in the email marketing information. And he's also now because he's in my list, he gets information about the fact that I'm also doing websites. So he's getting email marketing website, email marketing website, email marketing website. Now he's like, look, I was interested in getting the email marketing messages, but I'm not really interested in the website. I already have a website. I'm not really interested in that. And if he chooses to unsubscribe, what happens at that point? What, how does one, is that a loss I'm making? Because he would have been probably an email marketing customer sometime, but he didn't want to receive the repeated uh, website uh, making uh, information because he already has a website. And if he chooses to unsubscribe from my list because of the repetitive message, that's the thing that he's not interested in. What bucket do we put that under as part of the losses and we just move on or is there some other way to handle that particular situation? Yeah, move on unless his name is Mukesh Amani. <laughs> <laughs> no one is unique and useful. So if he needs your services, then he's going to come only to you. If he doesn't need your services, then why waste your time with him? Because you're unique and useful, you'd rather spend time talking to fresh people because somebody will be interested because you're unique and useful. Right? If somebody likes your services, he has to come only to you, right? Because you're unique. Now, for some reason, he doesn't want the services. You're, you're saving money on not emailing. So it's very good. I, 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 I'm maybe the most stupid person in the world or the smartest person in the world. People try to make, try to adjust with other people in a marriage or in a company. Why don't you get people who are already similar? It just doesn't make any sense. So research has proved and in, in fact, the, the biggest consultant today in the world is an Indian. He knows out of the Fortune 500 companies, probably 300 chief executives by name. Ram Charan. Okay. And I have been lucky to be trained by Ram Charan. He's mentioned if there is no, there's no cure 
for a wrong person. Just fire it. You can spend billions of dollars training it, nothing's gonna happen. There is no cure. So if this client, you got your positioning based on your rationale, which you are convinced appeals to a large number of people. And he is not one of those people. Now, if you're trying to please him, then you're going to lose out on a large number of people which are prospective. So that's what you do. You just have one list of prospects for everything you've got. And if they see value, they'll stick around. And if they don't see value, they're going to say, bitch, let's exit, right? And no, that's one increasing your number of prospects. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. There is no client loyalty that's proved by research. So what do you do? Uh, plenty of people, they keep on bombarding the same prospect list again and again, which is fine if it's low cost and it's not irritating to the client. That's fine. But let's say if you were to do an ad, which where, where you're paying a network, uh, maybe uh, a lakh rupees per minute or 10 lakh rupees a minute, what are the ad costs are? And then you're hitting the same market again and again. That does not make sense. You might as well take the same ad and talk to a different geographical area or to fresh prospects. So that, that again proves that it's better to go out to fresh people rather than to focus on one bunch of people. So this is great. Thanks once again, Darvindra. It's uh, always a pleasure talking to you and getting new and new concepts from you and sharing it with, with people that hopefully will benefit from this information. Thank so, you. Yeah. So for those of you that liked it, um, you know, as usual, hit like, hit share if you want to share it with people. And if you want, if this, this video is on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. So on YouTube, you can even subscribe to it. Click the little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video. And if they don't like it, they should unsubscribe. <laughs> so <clears throat> see you in the next video. Bye-bye.